Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at something which bothers a lot of people, and that is the way that Microsoft Edge tries to wheedle its way into basically anything you click within Windows 10 or Windows 11. This is actually really annoying, especially if you use, say, for instance, Google Chrome as your primary browser or another browser, and you click on a link and it opens up separately, and you've got a new Edge window, which is yeah, something which a lot of us don't like. Edge in itself is a fully functional browser, but there's a lot of AI things and basically Microsoft stuff built in, which I personally don't like and many of you don't as well. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at a product which we actually looked at about three years ago, which is MS Edge Redirect, which is an excellent program, uh, completely free of charge and you can install it very easily. There's various methods you can install it as a service, as an application or as a hook, so that if it detects that something's trying to access Microsoft Edge, it will automatically redirect those calls to your default browser, which is excellent. Anyway, I've put it on for way too long already. Let's head over to the computer and take a look at it and see how well it can work. Okay, so we're here on our Windows 11 desktop. Now this is just a new user account I've just created, so it's kind of completely fresh and ready. And an example of things which happen. So for instance, if you've got your default wallpaper, you've got an image here, it says, learn about this picture. So you click on it and yeah, straight away, even though Chrome is our default browser, it opens up in Bing, which is also part of Edge. So yeah, we don't necessarily want that. And also again, if you type in certain things in here, you're gonna get all of this stuff and also you get your co-pilot, all that kind of stuff that a lot of people don't want at all. So again, Chrome is installed and it is set as our default browser but it's still getting overridden by some other parts of Microsoft software. So we'll head over to this website here. So this is github.com and this is the MS Edge redirect. Links for this will be in the video description. And as you can see, this is now on version 0.8 and reports of my project's discontinuation are greatly exaggerated. So it's not been updated for a little while. So this is why I'm taking a new fresh look at it to see what has been changed. If you want to, you can read through all the changes which have been added. This, as it says here, is in beta, so changes are to be expected and performance will be improved. There's various ways you can install it, as you can see here, which we'll go through that. Obviously, you can take your own time and read through all of this should you wish to. If you want to download it, scroll to the bottom there and you can choose either the zip file or the exe, whichever one you want to do is entirely fine. It's a very small program, only one megabyte to actually download, so it's absolutely fine. So we'll click on this download and it'll go into our downloads folder. We can open that and we'll double click on it to get it running. And we can close these windows in the background. They're not necessary now. So again, you can read through the terms of the licensing if you want to, and you have to accept it. Then click on next. And now we've got some options of how we actually install this. So there's various options. There is a recommended mode, which is the active mode. So that is the best performing system-wide and also customizable and compatible install. So this works the best one. So it tells you there, MS Edge Redirect is run instead of Edge, similarly to the way the old Edge Deflector app used to run. It does not run in the background and it's compatible with the Edge Removal Program. Other options, you've got the service mode. So that is less intrusive, but does actually take up some CPU resources in the background, which most of you probably won't want. And also there's the Europe mode, which some of you may be aware of. So for people in the European area, then Edge basically can be removed, etc. So yeah, I would probably ignore that and I'd go with the recommended one, which is the active mode. So we'll choose that and click on next. And then you'll have to give it user account control access. So click on yes. And then we get the actual application itself. So if you ever want to run this again, all you need to do is go into the search box, just type in MS and it'll come up with the shortcut to the program itself. So we've got some options here of how it can be installed, the active mode. So you can have it so that it will detect Edge stable, Edge beta, dev, and canary versions. So if you use any of those, then you'd wanna click those as well. For most people, if you're just using a normal Windows installation, you'll be using Edge stable, which is the one which is installed as a default. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, service mode options, they're gonna be grayed out in this section because obviously we're using the preferred method. The most important bits are down here. So these are where it all gets a little bit more interesting. So things like the directions or additional redirections. So Bing Discover, we can get it so it goes to Google. Bing Search will also go to Google. MSN News, etc., will also go to Google. Of course, with these, you can change them as well. So if you want to, you can go with DuckDuckGo, for instance, on here. 
um, for Bing search, you've got lots of different options. So again, you can go through and choose your specifics, whichever you want to do. Also, there's an option for Google No AI as well, which uh, for some of you, you may like that, especially for the search options. MSN News, like we said, we've only got the options for Google or DuckDuckGo. So we'll go with Google and MSN Weather. You've got a lot of options here for weather. So if you want to use AccuWeather, weather.com, weather.gov, etc., you can choose those. Um, I think I'm just going to use AccuWeather, quite like that. Uh, Bing Images, we can choose that as well. So you've got, again, options there. I'm going to stick with Google. And also we've got the PDF Viewer. So if you want to change that, you can choose from default to custom. And then when it comes to custom, just go to whichever you want to do. So I'm going to choose it to use Google Chrome. So we'll go into Chrome and find the Chrome EXE and click on open. So that's now set. Also some nice little features we've got here. So we've got disable Windows Copilot, which is a nice little add-on. Also we can redirect Windows Spotlight. So that is these ones here from the desktop. So we'll redirect that. Also Bing Chat and also redirect Windows Store apps, because if you click on any of those, they generally will redirect to Edge as well. So once you're happy with this, you can click on Install, and you've got the option to create Start Menu Shortcuts. If you want to, you can donate to the project via PayPal, and also you can help get them off Google's blacklist. So to test out now, we can click on things to see if everything's working. Obviously, you do have to make sure that Google Chrome is set to your default app, otherwise it won't redirect anywhere. So if we click on Learn About This Picture, and there we go. This is now in Chrome. So if we go down to settings, we go to about Chrome, you'll see this is currently using Chrome, which is what we want to do. And it's also updating. So we'll let that do that a second. And I suggest you do that as well, because there's lots of vulnerabilities these days out in the wild. So it's always worth keeping Chrome updated. So again, even though this is Bing, it's now opened into Google Chrome, which is what we wanted to happen. And also if we go into things like the widgets, so if there's a particular widget, so uh, if we look at the weather and it will now go to AccuWeather rather than go into the Bing weather, which again is kind of what we want to do. Also, if we go into the search there, so we've got the search sections here. So if we click on one of these uh, trending searches, what should we go for? Let's go for Leeds United. And again, it's opened up in Chrome rather than opening up in Bing which is excellent. So again, whatever you're doing, whatever you're trying to achieve, if you're just trying to get rid of some of Microsoft's intrusion into your life with Microsoft Edge, but you don't want to uninstall it because of the problems that that can actually cause, uh, removing Edge is never really totally recommended because a lot of the kind of back-end systems do still rely on it in some way, shape or form. So I would strongly suggest keeping Edge on your system, but certainly yeah, do use some form of redirect wherever possible. And yeah, I think this is, does a very good job. Again, if you want to make any modifications, you just type in MS or it might be in your recommended. So type in MS and you've got MSER settings. You can go into that and it will open up the program again. So if you want to make any modifications, so say for instance, you wanted to change the weather now, we'll go to weather.com instead, click on save. And then if we go down to weather again, and now it's going to go to weather.com. Use it however you see fit. I think this is a, a very cool little application and hopefully for some of you, it's gonna make life a little bit simpler. So there you go, that is the Microsoft Edge redirect tool. I think it's actually come a long way and has actually improved somewhat. I do like to use these tools. Again, I'm not a great fan of Microsoft Edge. Maybe you are, let us know in the comments section your reasons why you like Edge, possibly over Google Chrome or another type of browser. Obviously there are other choices available, but let us know in the comments section. We're always interested to hear your thoughts. And if you've got any other kind of applications which do a similar sort of thing and you recommend them, again, let us know in that comment section and hopefully we can share it with the rest of our viewers. So I think that's going to pretty much wrap this video up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also don't forget to hit the chime icon. That way you've been able to future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.